Okay, let's keep going. We're gonna do the shotgun problem, very exciting. This is the, the only sort of complicated problem I'll do uh, this time, but we'll do some problems next Thursday because you'll have all this fresh on your mind. Okay, so here we go. So we're going to do the shotgun blast and ask, would I move? If we take some typical shotgun parameters here. Shotgun is a gun, that, you know. Let's see, so here we go. I'm on a low friction surface. I'm standing on some platform on a low friction surface, such as my wheels, say, for example. And I'm holding a shotgun like this. Sorry to make this so violent here. And I don't know, it looks like that. I'm not holding it against my shoulder, oh no. And there it is, I've got a complex here. So I've got a bullet that's gonna come out of the shotgun at 500 meters per second. Is a typical shotgun bullet velocity. Uh, let's see, what is that? That's the bullet. There we go. And uh, the mass of the bullet, typical shot mass is 30 grams, right? The length of the barrel of my shotgun is a meter. Wow, that's convenient. Okay, and I think that's all we need to know. And I weigh 70 kilograms as usual, 70 kilograms. And we'll make up, let's say because we're on wheels, let's say the static or the static friction coefficient is only 0.1. It's not the normal thing. There's really nothing is sliding here. We're on wheels, so we'll call it point one. Okay. So what we just want to know is if you consider the uh, bullet coming out this way, would I end up going this way? Would I go back? Because I didn't go back there. We looks like we broke conservation momentum. Bullet flew out. I didn't move. Right? We can't break conservation momentum. So maybe though, it's just because the bullet was so light. Okay. So let's go through it in terms of momentum. What is the initial momentum? I'm just sitting here. Nothing is moving, nothing at all. Pi equals zero. All right. There is no initial momentum. What is the final momentum? The final momentum, Pf, well, that's what we're going to calculate. No, it's zero. All right. As long as we're an isolated system, and we are, so we're just doing the x direction, so we don't care about gravity, we don't care about normal forces, we just care about forces this way. So the one other force this way, in addition to the impulsive force, might be some friction. That's what we got to check to see if maybe that's why we didn't move. Okay. Okay. So here we go. Let's see. Uh, first, let's see how fast I should go then, and see if it makes sense. So we don't really have to do a bunch of kinematics to figure that out. We just have to conserve momentum. So let's see. Let's say uh, the bullet is going forward. So 500 meters per second. And 30 grams is 0.03 kilograms, right? Okay, and let's do magnitudes. We know I'm gonna go back. I'm not gonna go forward. When we get into weird collisions where you don't know what's gonna happen, you do components, because you don't know what the value is gonna be. But right now, we know what's gonna happen. So we'll just write everything in terms of magnitude. So since we're talking about my magnitude V, I'm gonna put in the negative sign, okay? And then we say, oh, that's 70 kilograms. Right, and then the V that I'm looking for, the velocity of me, whatever, JH, right? There we go. And those have to equal zero. Because this is the change in momentum. Or, I'm sorry, this is the total momentum. We're adding it all up. So this is PF. If you're not sure exactly what we're doing here, we're saying PF equals zero. Okay, so you solve for that, and you just get a little number, and the velocity is uh, the magnitude of the velocity of JH is 0.21 meters per second. So that implies that if I blasted a shotgun while standing on that thing, that's how much of a kick I would get. So, you know, not like flying out of the room, but also not zero, like I would be moving. 0.21, you know, a fifth of a meter per second. Okay. Now really, I would be knocked off center. This is assuming a simple 1D system where everything's a point mass. What would really happen? My center mass is here. It would hit me in the shoulder here, and I would probably fly off because we would apply a torque. Uh, but we don't want to think about torque, so let's not think about that. But, but in reality, I would need to have it right on my center of mass. So hold the gun like that. That'd be weird. Okay, but here's the sort of the more, the other question is, but would it overcome uh, static friction? Because this would imply I should have moved with the Nerf bullet, I just should have moved a lot slower. Maybe I was moving so slow you couldn't see it, but I wasn't. I wasn't moving at all. So it may be then that the force wasn't enough to overcome static friction. So another thing we can do with this problem is we can figure out the force. All right. So let's figure out the force. Let's see. What do we have? 
we have uh, delta p, don't we? Uh, yeah, because we know the change in momentum. We went from 0 to 500 times 0.03, or 70 times 0.21, same thing. Right? We, we know we have delta p. Um, so therefore, we have a delta p. We have j. Right? So we know what j is. Uh, we know that j equals the force average times delta t. Right? So we need, uh, let's see, we have this, but we need the average force to see if it overcomes friction. And uh, also, we don't really even know delta t, do we? All right, so here's our problem. We don't, we don't know either one of those things. One of our trivial things would just be, here's the impulse, and here's delta t. Find f. You know, we, we put a few of those in there. So we have to go to kinematics. Right? So we go to kinematics to get, to get delta t. That's why we told you the length of the shotgun barrel. Right? So then you say, OK, let's do kinematics to get this part. We say, well, what do we know? We know vf was 500 meters per second squared. So we're probably going to do Vf squared equals Vi squared, because we know we accelerated for a distance, d. Right? We, the, the bullet must have accelerated from rest to 500 meters per second in one meter, because that was the length of the gun. Right? So 500 squared is 0 squared plus 2a times 1 meter. That's meters per second. So if we solve that, 20, 250,000 divided by 2 is A is 125,000 meters per second squared. Wow. That's really fast. The bullet feels a lot of g-forces. If there's an ant on the front of the bullet, there is no longer an ant on the front of the bullet. OK, so now we have A, but we wanted delta t. But we also have x. We know how far it went. So we just do more kinematics. We say um, uh, delta x equals 1 half a t squared. Right? So we're getting grown up here. I'm not writing x naught plus v naught t. Right? So we know it started at the origin. We know it started with no velocity. So that's 1 half. Let's see. So x is 1 meter. It went a meter. 1 half of 125,000 meters per second squared t squared. So we solve that. And we get 4 milliseconds. T, something very small, because right? the acceleration is so big. So that's what we need to know to think of this as a momentum problem. We need to know how fast the interaction was. Okay? And then we would say, OK, we could do it like F average delta T, then we're done. Or we could think about, whoa, what about the uh, real force versus time curve? What does it look like for a shotgun? I have no idea. Okay? It's probably not a nice even whatever. All right, it's probably not just a nice pull. Let's see. So there's a blast, and the chemistry has to happen. And then the pressure gets really high, and it pushes the bullet with the hot pressure gases, and then they start to decay. So it's probably something uh, asymmetric like that. Who knows? But the, the point is, we're trying to figure out, would it overcome friction or not? So if we do average, we're going to get a lower force. And then we'll find out if that overcomes friction, then we're fine. Anyway, we, we always do an average. We didn't give you some crazy uh, shape. Or if we give you a crazy shape, it'll be easy. It'll be, geometry. It'll be like triangles. OK, so we just plug that in here. So we say, OK, we know the uh, impulse uh, was uh, we could do 500 times 0.03, or we could do 70 times 0.21. Those are the same. Right? So we can say, go back to the impulse definition. We say 500 meters per second times 0.03 kilograms equals uh, the force average times 0.004 seconds, times 4 milliseconds. I know you can't see it. There we go. 500 times 0.03 equals force average times 0.04. This is just the definition of the impulse. Right, going back to here. All right. So we solved that. And what do we get? 3750 newtons. 3750 newtons is the force that the bullet felt on average. And therefore, that's the force I felt, I would have felt on average, pushing me back. But only for 4 milliseconds, right? so not for a long time. So is that greater than the friction force? Well, yes. Oh, wow. I left my subscript on. Sorry. Then, of course, it is. So the force of friction, static friction for me, 
is less than or equal to, it can only go up to mu s 0.1 times my mass times 9.8, right? Because this is the normal force in the y direction, right? I'm not moving in the y, we're just skipping over that step. So 0.1 times that is very small. So the friction force can only get up to 68.6 newtons. And the gun, the, the rifle applied 3750 newtons. So yes, I would move backwards for sure. Right? And I know because I've, you know, I've shot a lot of shotguns in my life. You know, I used to go hunting in Kansas when I was a child. And uh, my dad used me as the hunting dog. So like... We'd come up on some brush where there were some pheasants, and he would have me go walk into the brush and scare up the pheasants, and he would shoot them over my head. Uh, yeah, that's why I don't hunt anymore. <laughs> sort of had a... I mean, he never shot me or anything. Uh, why does the average force need to exceed friction instead of the maximum force? So the point I was trying to make is... So this was just sort of me ad-libbing here. So we just do the problem with average force. We have no knowledge of this actual shape. However, the answer we got would say, well... If 3750 exceeded the friction, I bet you this is going to exceed the friction because it's bigger than even 3750. That's what I was saying. That's all. If we had found friction was here, then it would be ambiguous. It'd be like, well, the average force didn't exceed friction, but the peak might have. But I knew that it was going to come out this way. So that's what I mean. The peak is always higher than the average. That's the only really thing you need to take away from that. The peak is always higher than the average force because of how we define things. Okay. <clears throat> 